I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, can we call for our daily bread before going to the broadcast for today? Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Expect a miracle today. Now that's what we just did. So don't just recite it. You release your faith in those words. Mark 11, 23. Jesus said, If you speak and doubt not, but believe that those things which you say will come to pass. He said, You shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. But first of all, you've got to believe that what is coming out of your mouth will surely come to pass. You've got to believe. And believing is your decision. So when, that, no, that's the same attitude you take to the place of prayer all that will cause this thing to change is that i will pray when i pray it will change and that, that's how it works praise god if i will pray it will change so I, I i go before the lord and then i begin to pray i know the only thing that is going to cause a change is when i pray and that must be your mindset before you pray Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we're talking about being fruitful and productive. Now, Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. We, 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 we were looking at what he says in verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now then, we were looking at Galatians chapter 5. And I was explaining to you yesterday what the fruit, when it says be fruitful, be fruitful, be full of fruit. That's what it's saying. Be fruitful. And I was explaining to you that the fruit he's talking about is a singular fruit. Not plural. Singular. So we were in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. When he was expressing telling you the quality or the characteristics of the fruit that he has commanded us to bear. So now he says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. So when he says be fruitful in every good work, let these love, joy, peace. Then he says long suffering. Long suffering. You have the ability to suffer long. Now, when, when I mean suffer long, I'm not saying be suffering for so long. No, that's not what it means. Long suffering simply means I'm going to stay on this matter until God changes the situation. That's long suffering. I'm going to stay on this. It's not going to affect me in any way. It's not going to affect my joy. It's not going to affect my attitude. It's not going to make me become negative. No, I know that this is not what God wants for me. I know that this situation is not. But you see what? I'm not going to change my mind concerning this. I'm going to keep my hope and trust in the Lord until I see a change. So how long are you going to do that? I'm going to be here for as long <laughs> as it changes. That's long suffering. The ability to suffer long. The ability to wait. Now, watch this now. It says long suffering. Then it says gentleness. Gentleness. His attitude is gentle. The way he does things is with gentleness. 
Have you seen this fellow who, who's so difficult to get him to be upset and angry? So difficult. Now, not because he doesn't feel the pain like every other person feels. But you see, gentleness, now all these things is as a result of one thing. Yielding to the seed of God that have been planted inside of you. Now then. So, gentleness. Then the next one he says, goodness. He's always good. You know, sometimes, you know, for example, you, you, you mainly you must have heard people say things like this. He's taking advantage of my goodness. And so what? And so what? Oh, you see that fellow? He knows, he knows I will always give him money. That's why he's taking advantage of it. Always coming. And so what? Give if you have to give to me. Hey, but, but, but there is no but to it. Now, see, learn this as a principle. Learn to take matters before the Lord. Now, I believe that is the best way you can guard your heart in your decision making. Now, sometimes, personally, uh, uh, it's, it's a regular prayer. I normally pray. I say, Lord, I just always want to follow your leading. I want to be guided by you in everything. So Lord, the things you know, you really don't want me to do. Just let me know and I will not do them. And the things you want me to do, just let me know. Lord, I won't think twice about it. I'll do it. Now, so... If someone approached you, Jesus said, give to everyone that asks you. I mean, that's what Jesus said. Give to everyone that asks you. Do you know what that means? Man, you know, you know how we think. If we're going to do that, then we're going to end, bro end up broke. No. You see, and that's the challenge with many people. You, you don't realize that every instruction that God gives to you, he gives to you with one mindset. That because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So it means the Holy Spirit is your guide. The Holy Spirit is your guide. See that now? And then you must learn to yield. Jesus said, for without me, you can do nothing. So even the instructions that he has given to you. Because sometimes you find believers who allow themselves to be condemned. Even when they, they, they know what, what they are supposed to do and how to go about it. But they allow condemnation into their hearts. For example, someone keeps offending you and then you've got to forgive. Now the person knows that you will have always forgive. So, the person takes advantage of you. I say, I know him. After all, he will forgive me. Don't worry. Don't worry. He will forgive me. Let's just do what we have to do. He will forgive me. Now, when you notice things like that, what do you do? You go to the Lord whom you obey and bring the matter before him and say, Lord, I, I sense this person is taking advantage of my gentleness. I don't know how to handle this, Lord. I have an idea, but I just want to be sure that's what you want me to do. Now, sometimes, you know, you find people say, must you pray about everything? Don't you have sense to know what to do? Oh, we have enough sense to depend on him, even in little things. So I bring the matter before the Lord, Lord. I don't want to go against your truth. I don't want to go against your personality. But please help me deal with this situation. 
Because in your heart, you know, if this person comes tomorrow to ask you for whatever, you would still give him. Now you trust the Lord, and what was the Lord going to do? I tell you what the Lord's going to do. <laughs> Praise God. He will take, he will cause. And now, now remember what he said. He says, if a man's ways pleases the Lord, the Lord will cause. I love the the, the phrasing of that statement. The Lord will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. I love that part. He said, the Lord will cause. Many, the Lord will make it happen. How does he make it happen is none of your business. He knows how to make it happen. But you see, he says the Lord will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. What's the person's job? Make sure your way is pleasing to the Lord. And how do you make your way pleasing to the Lord? Act by faith. How do you act by faith? Respond to the word of God that has come to you. See that now? You don't wake up and say, oh, I'm going to act by faith. So this is what I'm going to do. No, acting by faith is simply waiting for the word of God to come to you and responding appropriately to that word. So you bring this situation before the Lord because you, you, you know that you are supposed to be gentle. You are supposed to be gentle. Everything that attacks that your gentility, allow me to use that word, is an enemy. But how do I handle it? How do I handle situations like this? I take it to the Lord. I say, Lord, I'm not going to let this affect me being gentle. But Lord, I trust you to take care of this situation. Because I'm not going to walk in strife. I'm not going to... Yeah, now, now you remember Abraham. When he noticed there's about to be strife between his herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen. And Abraham looked at the whole situation and called Lot and said, Lot, look, let's not get into strife with one another. And Abraham did something that you will call foolish today. But he knew why he was doing it because his trust was in God. And Abraham made up his mind, I'm going to be fruitful. They said, Lord, come, let's not strive. The land is before you choose. He gave him the opportunity to choose. He was the uncle, Lot was the nephew. He, by right, he's the one that is supposed to say, Lot, go take this path. And from now on, don't cross this path. But Abraham knew that if he had done it that way, he's not going to kill that strife. So Abraham walked as one who trusts in the Lord. Even though God had promised him that land, he was still going to let it go, just not to enter into strife. And what did God do? God took care of him. The Bible said, after the Lord departed, God showed up and said, Abraham, stand up. Now look, north, south, east, west, as far as your eyes can see. I have given it to you. Now that was God's response to that situation because Abraham took the best decision to stay out of strife. Abraham decided I'm going to I'm going to walk in gentleness. Now look at it. Look at the next one there. It says goodness. Then it says faith. 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 The fruit you bear one of the qualities is faith. And what is faith? Responding to God's word. Now you see, you cannot separate this fellow from receiving the word of God. Because one of the qualities of his life will be faith. It means it's so easy to hear him tell you, oh, I was going to do this, but the Lord told me to do otherwise like so that's why i you, you, you can find me here doing what i'm doing right now oh yesterday i was i was walking down the road and then the lord asked me a question so have you thought about it oh wow i've never thought whoa now what's that faith 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 when last did god speak to you 
When last did you have that fellowship of interacting with God and, and, and He's just teaching you things and then you're responding to the things He's teaching you? That is faith. That is faith. So He's good and then He always walks by faith. Now, it's the same thing. Strive. Someone is bringing strife to you. And then you just look, Lord, what do I do concerning this situation? And Lord said, leave it. Don't get involved in his, with his strife. Okay, Lord, thank you. I'll leave it. And then he walks away. And everybody's looking at him like, this guy, maybe he's so powerless, he, he, he knew he would be defeated if he fights for this thing. No, sir. He has just heard the Lord speak to him. He, you know, Jesus said it. Moses said it. And Jesus also repeated it. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's how man is supposed to live. Meaning, man is supposed to live by faith. That's why it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. There is no way you're going to please God if you don't walk by faith. So, when, when, when we say be faithful, you know what that means? It means be constantly walking in faith. Thank you, Jesus. Meekness. Meekness. Now, meekness is, is, is that ability to keep yourself under even when you know your worth. See, you see, when we talk about meekness, you must know your strength. But then you choose to keep your strength under and just let things be. That's meekness. Meekness is different from foolishness see that now a meek man knows that he can deal with you mercilessly but a meek man looks at you and asks himself oh like gain I'd rather just keep quiet so he's keeping quiet is meekness That's why God called Moses the meekest man on the earth. You know why? Because Moses had had dealings with God. But Moses never allowed the things he has ex been exposed to with God to affect his relationship with the people. You remember Moses came down from the mountain and they couldn't look at his face. Now, if it's today, oh, that man of God have become God's assistant. He will use that for every advantage. But Moses was still concerned about these people being able to relate with him. So he had to use a veil to cover his face. Why? Because he wanted to interact with the people. That's meekness. Wasn't, wasn't Moses afraid that that's going to take away the glory? No. No. He didn't do anything special to get the glory. He just obeyed the Lord. The Lord said, follow me to the mountain. Yes, sir. And he followed the Lord to the mountain. And, and that's where it happened. By just interacting with the Lord, the glory began, began to dwell and, 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 and shine through him. But he didn't allow that affect his dealings with people. That's meekness. And it's natural. It's, it's just natural. Because it's a fruit. Now look at the next one. The next one says, temperance. That is self-control. One of the qualities of the fruit is self-control. Oh, I, I, I didn't know what came over me. I just had to do it. No, sir. No, sir. I knew where this thing was headed for and I decided, no, that's not the way I want to go. So I put a stop to it. Self-control. You know how to control yourself. 
with everything, including the anointing of God's Spirit. That's it. Now, there are some ministers who, who don't, who don't have, they just don't have self-control. They want to show that they are anointed. They want to show, you know, sometimes just like, you know what, let it be. I said, no, leave me alone. Let me deal with him. Hey, what are you going to gain after dealing with him? And he looked at it and said, so this thing is not going to produce righteousness after all. I'll just let it go. Self-control. In every way, in everything, self-control is made manifest in your life. Now, all these are the quality of the fruit that he has called you to bear. Now notice he says that you should be fruitful in every good work and then increase in the knowledge of God. Because you see, as long as, now, now everything about life is going to challenge your fruitfulness. It's going to challenge it. But then, instead of you backing off, instead of you breaking under the pressure that life is throwing at you, look up to God. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So now, now, now look at look at Jesus. He he was arrested. They flogged him. They did all manner of things to Jesus. Now, this is the same Jesus. He, he said it. He said, look, if I, if I want to, I can ask my father and he will give me legions of angels and they will, show, they will fight here for me. But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? Oh, boy. He was going through pains. He felt the pains. God didn't give him a special anointing not to feel the pains. He felt the pains. He felt the heating. He felt it. He felt the shame. He felt it. And he knew the kind of power. He knew he could pick up the dust and just throw on them and they would all become blind. He knew all those things. He knew. But then, the Lord did not tell him to do any of such. So he patiently endured the pain that he was going through. You know what that is? Self-control. Self-control. My time is up. Praise God. Oh, I pray for you right now. The Spirit of the Lord resident in you is producing in you the fruit. And in all of its quality, it is breathing, oozing out from you. And the more you release these things, the more the Lord is pleased with you. And when the Lord is pleased with you, He blesses you. And that's how your life keeps increasing in glory and glory and glory. Praise God. This shall be the story of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.